Um, um, I'm not going to preach tonight. We're going to study. So you're going to need your Bible. You're going to need your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, share yours with them. Look around here. There's someone laying. There's usually one or two laying right up here. You need to get your Bibles open tonight. And uh, we're going to start in the first chapter of Psalms. And hold your finger there and turn back to Joshua chapter 1 also. Joshua chapter 1 and Psalm 1. We'll read a verse of Scripture. And I want to point out a word in here. This is a word that we've never studied here at our church. And uh, we're going to study on it tonight, okay? Very popular word now. But the Bible, as always, has the right view on it. Psalm 1, first of all, it says, uh, verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, that's the Lord's law, doth he, the man, meditate day and night. See the word meditate. We're going to study on meditation tonight. Meditate. Meditation. Back to Joshua chapter number 1. Joshua chapter number 1. God was promising them what he's going to do for them here. And he said this. Joshua 1 verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. What in? in the book of the law, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. We're going to study about meditation tonight. Uh, It's a very, very popular uh, word and things, and uh, I I didn't, I, I just thought I'd look it up. The word meditate or meditate, meditate, meditation, is in the Bible 20 times. 14 times it talks about meditate. Six times meditation. Now, it's very popular now. People, meditation has never been more popular than it is today in this hour. Oprah Winfrey recommends a 21-day meditation course uh, for people to clear their mind and think beautiful thoughts and uh, a bunch of stuff like that. Now, I'm going to give you some scripture, and then we're going to go back and introduce the, the message tonight, or the, the study we're going to have. The word meditate itself means to think about deeply and carefully. Uh, and the Bible said we're supposed to meditate in his word. It'd be like, I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to meditate on that. I go to prepare a place. Man, wonder what kind of place that's going to be. Man, think about Jesus going up there and doing that just for us. Man, think about a place he can prepare to do that. Now meditate. I'm meditating on his word. That's the right way of meditating. Now the world, as always, has a counterfeit. The devil has a counterfeit for everything God has in the Bible. There's even a counterfeit Christ. That's what they call antichrist. Everything that's right, like every positive, there's a negative. And everything that's right and good and holy The devil has a counterfeit. So the devil's counterfeit is the aid of chanting and contemplative prayer and vain repetition, Eastern religion and meditation, Hindu, yoga, stuff like that. All that stuff is of the devil. The Bible said, now I'm going to say something here that some of y'all, you might not like, but if you'll hear me out, I believe you'll you'll get my point Uh, because it's so popular today. In the Bible, the only time it mentions meditating is in God's Word and His will and His work in your life. So every other type of meditation is, would be against the Scripture. In plainer words, there is no such thing as Christian yoga. There's no, a Christian has no business fooling with yoga. And, and if you don't know that, it's because you don't know what yoga is. It has, uh, uh, I'll get to that in a minute about, you know, doing your fingers like this and crossing your leg and tie yourself up in a knot and thinking wonderful thoughts. You can exercise all day long without doing that. You sure can. You can get in good shape and lose weight. Everywhere I go, people say, how do I lose weight? How do I lose weight? I'm going to show you how to lose weight. Watch. 
You know how I got off there? Opposite from the way I went up. It don't take a genius to figure that out. Here's how I get up. How do I get back down? How do you gain weight? Eating. How do you lose weight? Don't eat. I can save you a fortune and you'll even save money. It don't cost you a dime. And Okay? Uh, and so you, this don't make you lose weight doing stuff like that. They do that. They do that so that them spirits, instead of running out of them, it runs in a circle and runs back through them. Runs over here and runs back through here. Like that right there. Now, that's a bunch of junk. Anybody does that? <laughs> Anybody does that? Don't know what they're doing. They, they're messing around with wrong kind of spirits. Don't get mad at me. Hear me out. Uh, there's even churches. Big, them, these big mega churches, like that big out in California, is having Christian yoga classes for all the Christian women to come and do yoga so they can think clearly and lose weight. That's a bunch of junk. Now, uh, we're going to talk about what the Bible says about. Let me give you some scriptures. Won't take time to turn to all these. In Genesis 24 and verse 63, the Bible said Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the eventide. And he was looking for his bride. Isaac's the type of Christ. Rebecca's the type of the church. Uh, the Holy Spirit, Eleazar. That's all a picture of God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field, thinking about his bride coming home. In Joshua, the script that I've read to you, listen to these in Psalm, Psalm 63, 6, Psalm 77, 12, Psalm 119, 15, Psalm 119, 23, Psalm 119, 48, Psalm 119, 78, Psalm 119, 148, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15, the Bible says, meditate upon these things, these things, give thyself wholly to them. Psalm 19, verse 14, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Psalm 119, 97, thy law is my meditation. You know what you're to meditate about? On the Lord and his word and his law. Now we'll get back to that in just a minute. We're talking about how the devil has made a, uh, a, a counterfeit uh, copy of it. They, they say that 1,000 different studies have shown People who meditate live healthier, happier, and longer lives. That's, that's not right. It's, I explain that, but it won't take time to get into it right now. I was playing ball with this guy over in the gym some time ago, and he's up north. He's moved here from somewhere, uh, up near Chicago or somewhere, and I was talking to that Yankee and all that stuff right down with him. And he, he was, uh, he was uh, talking to me, and I was talking to him, and he said, he said, man, I'm getting back in shape. He said, I feel better than I've ever felt. And he said, some ex-guy from that had worked with NBA players was training him. I said, really? I said, who around here used to work with, with train NBA players? He named somebody or something like that. And he said, he said, man, he's got me. He said, it's more than just lifting weights. He said, it's, it's all about this. And he began to go into his abdomen muscles and this muscles and this exercise and that exercise. And he said, they, he said, it's not just lifting weights. He said, it's twisting and bending. He said, they got, he said, I can tell my shots better. I can move quicker, all that. And he said, uh, he said, and it's yoga. We do so much yoga. I said, you mean the NBA players are doing yoga? He said, yes, it's all a part of, of my training, you know, and everything. I thought, boy, ain't that devil smart? Ain't that devil smart? He slipped that stuff in there. And honestly, them guys said, I think that's going to make them a, a better person and healthier and happier. You can exercise plenty without doing that. Now, how many of you have ever heard of TM? Raise your hand. You ever heard of TM? Transcendental Meditation. All this stuff started, it was round, but it kicked into the country by the Beatles back in the 60s. The Beatles wanted to start this stuff. The Beatles got popular. They got on top of the world. And they done everything you could imagine. And then they got on the LSD and started taking trips. And, and, and then uh, John did not like Jesus. John Lennon did not like Jesus. He said Jesus Christ, quote, John Lennon, the Beatles, sweet little Beatles, said that Jesus Christ was a dirty, stinking Catholic Spaniard bastard. That's what he called Jesus Christ. He was a blasphemer. He hate, they hated God. And they said it was unbelievable how wicked them guys, only in their 20s, 
kept 14 year old girls in their motels and stuff. They were wicked potheads. And the Beatles, they, they said, well, we've done everything. What else is there? And then they said, well, what about God? They said, well, one thing for sure, this, this God in the USA and England ain't the right God. So they traveled over yonder to, to some, met that guru, Maharish, Yushashi, somebody another, some fella they met over there. Remember, did y'all remember seeing him? Had that old beard and everything. And they come back and their songs started sounding like this. Bing. Meditate. And they said, uh, we're going to sit around, you know, and, and we've opened up another consciousness in our mind. And now we can, now we can be at one with the universe. And, and the whole world went crazy. And that's why meditation is so popular in the United States right now. It's gone wild in this country. Now, TM means transcendental meditation. Transcendental. Like, tr I'm leery of anything with that word trans in it nowadays. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a scary word nowadays. And they have, uh, in, in meditation, in yoga, they have transcendental meditation, they have mantras. And mantras, have you ever heard of mantras? Raise your hand. Okay. That, that's like a, a word or a phrase that you repeat over and over and over to get your mind into the position where you can reach higher consciousness and, and learn greater wonderful things. Maharishi was that guy's name, Yogi, Yogi. And um, they say that a mantra acts as a vehicle upon which the attention rests. Now listen to this. This allows your mind to settle in to subtle levels of thinking. It attracts and charms the mind which is searching for greater happiness. In ancient India, there was uh, enormous supposedly healing effect and all of this kind of stuff. And, and, and they, they started this chanting and, uh, you know, one of the famous mantras is Om, O-M, O-M. And most of the time, an Om is done silently. You're chanting it in your mind. But if you're going, Om, um, they go like this. They go, Om. Oh. How do you do that with a straight face? Now, to me and you as Christians, we think they're crazy. But the whole world's going to oh, owe that stuff. You know what that is? That's the devil's counterfeit. For God's meditating on his word day and night. See, meditating on the word of God is such a great thing. You know the devil's going to have a counterfeit. So we don't want the word of God because it tells us we can't shack up and get high and, 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 and turn homosexual and everything else. So we'll invent our own meditation without that. And so you come up with, um, um, um. Now you've heard me preach this for years and here it is again. Now you're going to understand it better than ever. You know what you're doing? You're kicking your brain in neutral. That's the best way I've ever heard it put. And I preach that everywhere. You are kicking your brain in neutral, just like you put your car in neutral, and you're kicking your brain in neutral, and buddy, that's the most dangerous thing you can do in our generation. You are opening yourself up to some other kind of spirit. Now, the, the, you know how you can get demon-possessed? Through repetition, through uh, rhythm. And that's why the devil, that's why the devil's doing his sex, drugs, and rock and roll, brother. He has all that, that beat, that music. And you get possessed by demons by opening yourself up and getting in a passive state of mind. And buddy, the demons are having a heyday with it. Uh, they, they, um, let me tell you what the Lord said. The Lord said in Matthew 6 verse 7, be not as the heathen. Be not vain repetition. Be, don't repeat vain repetition. In other words, you're a heathen if you sit around and say, <laughs> and the first thing you know, you start, you start, you, you kick your brain in neutral, chanting over and over and over and over. It's like in the Catholic churches, Hail Mary, Mother of God, remember us now in the hour of our death. Hail Mary, Mother of God. Uh, who was Catholic in here before you got saved? Shaughnessy, uh, Chanel. Did y'all ever do that stuff? Chant, I mean, say the same thing over and over and over?
So you just go around saying, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. Yeah. And you know how much good that does you? Nothing. That's vain repetition. Jesus said this. He said, use not vain repetition as the what? Heathen. That's a heathen practice. Did you do it, Shaughnessy? Did you do it? You, are you paying attention? You still do it. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Who does the rosary? Jessica? You was Catholic? Oh, okay, growing up. Uh, but anyway, did y'all do that? Hail Mary, Mother of God, remember us sinners now in the hour of our death. Yeah. <laughs> I put a little redneck twist on it there. Hail Mary, uh, H-A-I-L, hail, not hell. Like, like we, same word spelled, uh, spelled same pronouncing spelled different. H-A-I-L-H-E-L-L. -L. Uh, but you know what? That's vain repetition, people. That's, you're, you want to, that's worse than wasting your time. You'd be better off to watch a cartoon than do that. Because at least in cartoons, you don't open yourself up to demons. That's repetitive, repetitive. The Lord, <laughs> that's right. How many of you have ever heard of TSM? This is the newest, TSM. Anybody ever heard of TSM? Okay, what that is is Transcendental Stress Management. Transcendental Stress Management. And here's what they say. They say that if you learn to meditate 15 to 20 minutes twice a day, well, hello, prayer time, that it'll make your life so much better and it becomes effortlessness and naturalness. If you'll learn to meditate 15 to 20 minutes twice a day. Now, you know what that is? That's the devil's substitute for you spending time in prayer every morning. Listen, people, you don't, we don't, uh, you, I don't get down every morning and say, uh, Oh God, 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 for 15 minutes? Well, I'd feel crazy if I'd done that. You would be crazy if you'd done that. If you ain't crazy, you would be if you kept doing that two times a day. If you kick your brain in neutral, another spirit go, pops right in there. You don't, I don't want to, you say, well, don't you, wouldn't you like to the place, get to the place where you just don't think? No, no. Sometimes I wish my mind would be still. But I don't want to get to where I don't think. You know how you don't get like that? Drugs. That's why drugs opens up. Drugs opens up some kind of door in your spirit. I can't explain it, but I've had too many people. There's too many testimonies. Thousands of people say, "Man, I got high and I seen the devil." And I've seen. I've had people, and it's and, and it never is. You never dream of grandma baking you a cake. It's always a demon with horns and and stuff like that. Drugs opens up your spirit, spiritual realm to that. Now listen, now listen to this. Here's what they say. Anything this complicated can't be right. Here's what TSM is. Meditating 15 to 20 minutes per day twice. You ready for this? Listen, see if anybody can understand this. Systematically experience more refined, silent mental activity as the mind spontaneously settles inward and mental activity subsides, wakefulness increases, mind comes to a state of perfect rest but remains awake in a state of maximum comprehension. Here we go. Let's try that again. Systematically experience more refined, silent mental activity. That's an educated way of saying, kick your brain in neutral and the devil will get in you. But they don't know that. They think it's this peace that you reach this higher level of consciousness and suddenly you feel peaceful. And I'll, listen, I'd be scared of anything that told me not to think. Hey, something, hey, something wrong with any doctrine or any church or any that tells you not to think. Amen? That's right. That's right. You don't ever need to get out of your mind where you can't think. I don't want nothing that makes me out of my right mind. People say, man, I just want to get drunk. I, listen, I want to know where I've been, what I've done. I, I, want, I don't want to say, well, I don't remember where I was last night. What in the world? There ain't no telling what you like to pick up that way. Uh, so it says, spontaneously settles inward. Mental activity subsides. 
What does that mean? Mental activity subsides. You quit thinking. I don't know if I can do that. I think you've got to be weird to be able to do that. I don't know if a saved person with the Word of God in them can get like that. I guess you might could. I don't know. <laughs> you sure would. You sure would have to be backslid. I don't see how. I can't imagine getting to where I don't think. I, you know what my mind's like? Even when I try to pray sometimes. You know them little things you buy this time of year and they're glass and they're about that big? Yeah, and you shake them and all the snow goes around in there. Like that right there. You just let it sit there a long time before it all settles. That's the way my head. When I lay down at night, I got all this stuff going around. Like, and then finally it just settles down and goes to sleep. But I, don't, I wouldn't want that. I don't want to be mindless in, in my, when you're awake, for heaven's sake. You are awake in a state of maximum comprehension. That means you're not thinking, but you have a maximum state of comprehension. You can take all kinds of things in you. That's a dangerous way to be, y'all, without the Word of God. All right? Let's study it the right way. This is the right way. All, it's a necessity. Every Christian ought to learn to meditate upon his word day and night. I've done scared you now and made you think medit meditation is a bad thing. It's not. I will meditate in this day and night. In thy word. Thy, in thy law. Meditate day and night. Joshua 1, Psalm 1 and verse 2. Uh, Genesis 24, uh, Psalm 63, 6, Psalm 77, 12, 1 Timothy 4, 15 said, Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. The Word of God. Now, it's a necessity. All stringed instruments, my guitar, that piano, that bass guitar gets out of tune. Whether something hits the keys, something gets them out of tune, they have to be tuned up. And that's the way your heart is. Your heart gets out of tune. But with the world, and we have to tune it. Meditate is keep, you know, whisper a prayer in the morning, whisper a prayer at noon. We'll keep your heart in tune. Remember them, them songs like that? Uh, that's, that's what meditation is. You will not, listen to me, you will not live right, you will not think right, you will not act right unless you have God's Word in your heart and in your mind. You don't just automatically live right. You are not automatically a good person. There is none good, not one. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you have a natural tendency to do the wrong thing. And we have a natural tendency to think the wrong thing, to say the wrong, to act selfishly. It's, we're, we're made that way. Our flesh naturally goes the wrong way. You have to purposely put the Word of God in your heart. You have to purposely put the Word of God in your heart and meditate on it to keep yourself straight. Now, uh, uh, think about that. Now let's talk about what we shouldn't, what we can do about. What can we, how can we, how can we meditate, or what should we meditate about? Comfort, comfort. Second Corinthians one three, Bible says He's the God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort. You say, well, brother Danny, I'm just lost a loved one, and I'm going through a divorce, and I'm going, man, I'm just hurting all the time. Learn to meditate on that scripture. He's the God of all comfort. The comforter. Get you some scripture and say it going down the road. I know people that put little, those little verses of scripture on their, their dash in their car so they can memorize a verse. You know, they used to have those little cards with scripture on them. Put one on. Learn that verse. Learn another verse. Learn another verse. Say it while you're going to work. Listen, if you're having problems as a Christian and you listen to the latest country music hits all the way to work and back every day, you ain't going... You, I think meditating on God's word day and night. Listen, y'all, you ain't just dumb, surely. Just because it ain't satanic don't mean God's pleased with it. Amen? Say, country music, the bad thing about it is you can understand what they're saying, and it ain't good. It ain't like, I mean, you can feel the devil in that, but it's uh, probably 90% of country songs has cheating on somebody, drinking whiskey, uh, living, you know, friends in high, low places, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, they all do that to get the Christian's money. Yeah. Yeah, they'll have one song on there where they sing about God, so the Christian's like, see there, he's a Christian. I'm going to buy that CD. And, and 
Listen to the other nine songs 400 times each. That's just a bunch of junk. Listen, them people ain't a bit more living right than, than our dog at the house. I mean, who are they trying to kid? Uh, you, you ain't going to stay in that industry and, uh, and honky-tonks and clubs and people throwing their clothes at you on stage and say, I'm right with God. You trying to, are you trying to kid somebody? Are you, trying to, are you trying to just act like, well, I don't see anything. Well, you do too. Deep down, you know it ain't right. You just like it, like people like liquor. You like it like people like whiskey. You like it like people like crack and meth. You, you just got a different drug, and it'll take it longer to kill you. But you know what? Um, you meditate in the Word of God, meditate. You have to work at it. You have to work at it, man. You have to work at it. Can I say something to you again? Nobody just automatically lives right. You don't just you say, well, Brother Dan, I've had people tell me, it must be nice. You can stay right with God all the time. You think I automatically? Man, I have to fight it all the time. I have to work at it all. I have to fight my flesh. I have to fight my own natural desire. I'm made out of the same stuff you are. You say, well, you're a preacher. It don't make no difference. Lord have mercy. I'm a preacher as mean as anybody else. And when we're not right with the Lord, that's, we are. That's right. You heard about that song, all them rock music songs had backward messages in them. They said they took one of them country songs and they said, we're going to see if it has secret satanic backward messages. And they played it backwards and the guy got his dog back and got his shotgun back and got his pickup back. Uh, it all worked out. But anyway, uh, that's, that's meditate. All right, how about this? Here's you something to meditate about. If you're tempted, temptation, let's just say I'm throwing this out in the wild blue, that you're tempted. I shouldn't think that in a good, godly, separated, soul-winning, independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church like shining light. But maybe there's somebody in here that's tempted. Is there anybody in here, don't have to raise your hand, that's ever tempted? Well, you know what you can do? You get 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And it says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You'd almost think I'd used that verse before, wouldn't you? It's been a long time since I could. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Listen, people, get it in your head. Meditate on it day and night. Before you go to bed tonight, say, there hath no temptation taken me, because you know them boys are going to want to go out Friday night and they're going to want you to go to the club, the bar, and everything. You get this in your head. There is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. It ain't no different than it is anybody else. Everybody gets tempted. Meditate on that. But God is faithful, who will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. What's your way of escape? Sorry, boys. I'm going to take, go home and see my family tonight. Sorry, boys. I'm going to go home and spend time with the kids tonight. Sorry, boys. Sorry, girls. I'm not going out with you Friday night. Sorry, y'all. We're not going there Saturday night. God is faithful who will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. See, I've done helped y'all just by quoting that. Now, you imagine uh, meditating on that day and night and watch what happens. If you've got a temptation, alcohol, drugs, sexual act, immorality, any kind of... Uh, Lying, stealing money from somebody you work for, what it, anything you've got a temptation, anything you've got a temptation, disrespect, unbelief, get you a verse of Scripture and meditate on it day and night and then come back and tell me in a month that you ain't got help. I dare you. I dare you. You meditate on it day and night. What about hope? What about hope? You say, sometimes I just think there ain't no hope. Get you some Scripture. Get you some Scripture. It says... Um, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You wouldn't believe how much that verse right there will help you. Grab that verse right there and meditate on it day and night. I dare you. Grab it and meditate on it. You wouldn't believe the times. I, sometimes our bus workers, they'll go out and they'll say, Man, we went hardly and wasn't nobody home. And I've got this great. And you know what pops in my head? Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that keeps me going. See, I meditated on that scripture many years ago, and now it keeps me going. That's why God said meditate on this in his law day and night. You get you a verse, having trouble with your wife or your husband, like I preached about the other night. Get you a verse of scripture and say, 
I'm going to be... Wives, submit yourself to the husband as fit in the Lord. Da, 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 da. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Quote yourself that verse. Uh, meditate in it day and night. Meditate in it day and night. Listen, if they can spend 20 minutes a day saying, Om, Om, Om. Listen, if you can spend 20 minutes a day doing that, no, I, don't, I feel stupid. That's all I felt. Uh, but if, if they can spend 20 minutes a day doing that, don't, is not your heavenly Father able to do way more than that? Talk to the Lord about it, man. Talk to the Lord. Uh, uh, what about assurance? What about assurance? You say, well, Brother Danny, I just go around all the time doubting God. and How do I know God's even real? I mean, the world's so crazy, and they talk about this religion. How, how do I even know which God? I'll tell you how. Get your heart right. Get you a bunch of these verses and meditate on him day and night, and he'll show you he's real. You can find out if he's real. You can find out if he's real. Don't give me that junk. Can you read? Can you read? You got a fifth grade education? You can find out if God's real or not. If you ain't so lazy, you won't do it. Or so wicked. Uh, listen, you get down and you say, God, I want to know, Lord, if you're there, you show me. I want to know for real. I want to know the real truth. I want to know the truth. And, and you quote you a bunch of verses of Scripture and says we know that we have eternal life because of, of what he's done in our lives. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, you know, we all go through times when the devil attacks us and puts crazy stuff in our head. You meditate in that book right there, day and night, and watch what happens to them doubts. Watch what happens to that fear. Watch what's happened to that wicked thought. If you've got a lust problem, if you've got a lying problem, if you've got a, uh, just a lazy problem, that's a good outline, ain't it? Lying, lazy, and lust. Oh, Lord, have mercy, what a sorry, good for nothing you are. I, I'm telling you, if you've got any of them problems, you medit- get you some scripture and clean your mind up and meditate in it day and night and watch what happens. Amen? Amen? Now, the purpose, the purpose is... By the way, he said day and night, day and night. Don't just forget your Bible and God all day long and then say a little prayer before you go to bed at night. I say, people have it. says, well, I read my Bible every night before I go to bed. That's good. I'm proud of you. But I'm telling you, you'd be better off to read it in the morning. In the mornings before you have to go face the whole day than people at work, crazy people and, and you have to work with and deal with all day long. You're better off spending time with God before you do that rather than after you've done messed up all day and then trying to get right before you go to bed. Now, it's good to do both. I hope you do both. I always, I always read my Bible. I've finished I finish mine. I've done my New Testament three times this year and my Old Testament once. I'm already done. I'm ready to start all over again with it uh, in January 1st. And if you'll re- you can read three chapters in the Old Testament, two in the New, and read the whole Bible through next year, 2018, and the New Testament twice. You say, well, I just can't do it. If you'd put it this way, if you spent one-tenth as much time as you do on that phone, you could read the whole Bible next year. And the reason you don't do it, I'll tell you why you don't do it. You don't want to. You don't want to. The reason you don't read your Bible, you don't want to. Now, you get mad at me, but you ought to appreciate me being honest with you and slapping you a little bit. You ought to appreciate that. You ought to appreciate me. It, I mean, nobody. I don't want you mad at me, but it's the truth. You don't read your Bible because you don't want to. You're entertaining yourself with that phone. That's entertaining. That phone's fun, ain't it? It's got all them colors and lights, and you can zoom. Isn't that? I mean, and 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 it's got, it's inter- it's entertaining. I got one, but I tell you, you don't read your Bible because you don't want to. You make yourself read that until you do want to. Meditate in it day and night, day and night. All right, that's my little study on meditation tonight. Uh, anybody got a question or a comment? You can cancel your yoga class now, Jimmy. You ain't been going to yoga. Ain't no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. You can sit around and think everything's wrong, everything's bad for me, for me and you'll convince yourself it's true. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly tells me, she said, and, and she's heard me preach this. She tells me, she said, don't look at the bad the devil's doing, look at the good God's doing. And that's true. 
That's exactly right. That's what you've got to do. You can't look at everything that's bad in the world. You've got to look at what good, what good God's doing too. Yeah, yeah, I see. it's out there in California, in the church. Christian yoga. Y'all look it up on the internet. Look up Brother Charles Lawson. I know that. It's unbelievable. Preacher over in Tennessee. He's one of the greatest preachers in America. Not his church. Oh, he's preaching. <laughs> you on that moonshine again, Donna? Now she's been drinking moonshine. Uh, anybody else right quick? Yeah.